Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited. I'm really excited because today I have one of my favorites of all time, Jerry. I like to call him Geronimo Diaz. Jerry Diaz. I told him he's my soulmate in the sphere <laughs> of, of the ecosystem that we call the nonprofit sector. Jerry, I was thinking this morning in the shower where I do my best thinking. You and I met, I swear, it had to be close to 20 years ago. Oh, gosh, it's been, as as they say, it's been a minute. Uh, <laughs> I think so, I think so. Well, you are one of the preeminent fundraisers of all time, um, now independent as a consultant, and so, plus a, an incredibly wise human being, and so I love learning from you. And, and one of the things that we want to talk about today are the summer tasks for fundraisers, because we are, ha sometimes I think we get fooled into having a lull before the big year end, calendar year end, and the holidays, and, and, and the push for giving. And so I'm gonna be really interested to um, hear how you, you can guide us through this period of time. Um, call it reflection, it should not be a lull. <laughs> we shouldn't be on vacation. So sure. we'll talk about that. And uh, before we do, let's go ahead and I'll reintroduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd herself, has the day off. Hello, it's her birthday. Um, I know. Actually, it's happy birthday. But it's kind of like a birthday two day thing. So um, anyway, she'll be back with us. You know, we are here each and every day for more than 800 episodes. Thanks to the largesse of our sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller, nonprofit thought leader. Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Tech. Check these folks out. You know, you can get to us through our streaming platforms, our podcasts, but now we have the sexy new app. So you can take a quick shot of this QR code that's on screen and you can be registered to get our push notifications. They'll tell you every time a new show has been uploaded and it also has this amazing search function. Okay, but the real star of the show is not our new app. It's Jerry Diaz, CFRE. Thank you, my friend, for joining us today. Julie, thank you for having me. It's uh, nice. I've been here a few times talking about different topics, and uh, today's topic so relevant, right? The timing is good. It is, and, you wow. know, I think we work so hard with so few resources, um, in the nonprofit sector that when the summer comes, like especially the beginning of the summer, there's a sense of like, okay, we're, we're in summer school, we're in summer vacation mode, we're in, you know, a, a, a time where we can be quiet, but that's not really the case, is it? No, <laughs> I, I would say that depending on the season, um, thing, you focus on different things, a little bit um i will open up um, our conversation about self-care right okay. so so important right so yeah. we're we're saying you know we're basically saying your fiscal year is you know january to december but really readjust the time frame right depending on when your fiscal year is whenever that whenever that lull is maybe the lull isn't for the summer but we're still our premise today is that the, there is a lull in the summer right in that um and, but this also gives you an opportunity for reflection on work, personal, family, your commitment to the community. What does that look like, right? So our our focus on our conversation today is gonna kind of be work-related, right? Mm -hmm. So this is really focused for fund development professionals and fund development managers or leaders. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna toggle that conversation back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, this comes from you know, decades of being in the workforce and kind of learning, right? So I always say, if you pick up one or two things, it's fantastic. Remember, the shows are always recorded. There are going to be archives, so you can look at them whenever you want. So if you want to, if there are some things in here, you said, I want somebody else to hear this, See you that. can just pull it up whenever you want through a fancy app. <laughs> I know, yeah. fancy schmancy. No, it's cool. And I appreciate you saying that because I think there is a cadence of, time and place and seasonality depending on what we do in our sector you know what part of the country we're in i mean it just it, it has so many variables 
but one of the things that is not a variable and that should be reviewing your development plan talk to us about that because it seems like if we have a plan we have a plan oh this is, this is a big one this is a big one okay so we're going to just dive right into this so when when the organization and the board um they kind of approve a budget that never changes mm -hmm. the reforecast does change okay. so typically i always like this in the summer months um so you'll basically say you know we're now six and six six months in six months worth of actuals six months worth of projections right? right so you want to be able to kind of go what were the first six months like what were the wins what were the successes what okay. were the opportunities uh, and then the other uh, piece of advice I always give is when you get those when you get those actual financials, rebroadcast or reforecast what the rest of the time is going to be, right? You know, like are you up? Are you down? Are you going to hit the number? Not hit the numbers? You know, and do that realistically, right? Like where is it coming from? Not the like if we run the tables, we're going to hit our goal, right? Like what is realistic, right? And then be able to communicate that to everybody, right? There should be no surprises, right? You know, fundraising is a team sport, even though you may be sitting in that chair making the phone calls or special events or doing all that, you have to be able to communicate that. So I always reforecast halfway through the year mm -hmm. and then the I reforecast nine months into the year because that's kind of when budgeting starts, right? So this is where like, where are you going to make that? Because And the reason I do that is because when you reforecast nine months into the year, then you can do realistic numbers on where you're going to end. Because the, because the board of directors will say, if they don't know where you're really going to end, that, right? Yeah. And to say, hey, we didn't hit the number on XXX, but we exceeded it on something else. So we're still going to achieve the bottom line goal, but here's where that revenue is going to come from. And here's how you can play a role in that. So first tip, reforecast i love it uh the other piece that i would say when you review your plan is review the light bunt and side bunt uh that's um some years but not last year last year but not some years um like were you successful in and getting those donors back right is, do you need to put some strategy into that if you're if you're going to fall short on some things review some of those older donors for some reason maybe they weren't communicated uh maybe they moved, who who knows, right? And, but that also goes for, uh, even though live and side bun specifically for individuals, you can also do it for third party events. Uh, you could do it for grants. Smart. You, uh, you know, uh, yeah. maybe, you know, uh, we always see sometimes with particularly third party events, there's some really great third party events of people, third party events is where somebody raises the money on your behalf. And sometimes they'll change nonprofits or it's like, oh, we're gonna take a break. Well revisit that. Maybe they've taken a break and maybe they're, they want to come back. Right. Um, and then the other piece to remember always when you're doing fund development is it always starts with goals, strategies, tactics, execution, the analysis, and you start all over again. Right. So if there's a breakdown, if you're not hitting some of those numbers, go back to the basics. Right. Uh, and I also think, Julia, this is also in the middle of the here's also a time to revisit board giving, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, do you have a board giver get? Do you not? Uh, you know, board members are there to help. You might remember it's also part of the responsibility to make sure the organization has the resources it needs. So this is a responsibility for them. So maybe revisiting that board giver get and just communicating um, those out. I think that some of those are some of the really key pieces just on the review of the plan. And you might remember, this is always done with other people, right? Depending on the size of the organization, right? If it's one or two or mm -hmm. 20, you want to make sure that, you know, everybody's involved in this. Everybody, and we'll talk about a culture of philanthropy in a little bit. Uh, but that is, I think, some of the big takeaways when just reviewing the plan in general is take a holistic approach and if you're um, not going to hit those numbers, that's okay too, right? Yeah, it's what I hear you saying is, let there be no surprises on all fronts. Like, 
don't be the one that's surprised that you didn't meet a goal or that you exceeded a goal. Be the one that's like, yeah, remember we talked about this and, and this was what we could anticipate um, and this is what we're doing to mitigate it or, you know, correct, whatever. I think I really like your approach here, Jerry. I really do. I want to jump over into strategies for achieving goals. You You briefly looked at this whole ecosystem that we have, how we're navigating mm. it. Um, and I love that you had a review piece built in with an adjustment phase, like saying to yourself, okay, where are we gonna meet you know, our goals? Where, where are we not? But talk to us about maybe some of these strategies as opposed to a win or a lose. Sure, so here are some um, strategies. Um, one I already mentioned, right? Uh, new versus repeat money, yeah. right? So we're you're gonna have to find new money. Where is it gonna come from? Mm -hmm. So having a strategy around money. Um, I worked with some organizations. I worked in an organization once. We had what we called an 80-20 rule, right? Mm -hmm. So we basically said 80% of our money was gonna repeat, 20% was not, right? That was the rule of thumb. So figure right. out your 80-20, right. right? So where is the 20% gonna come from? Where are you going to find that new money? Are you going to get it from existing donors and ask them to increase their giving? Are you going to go out and do a donor acquisition piece, right? Are you gonna get introduced to new donors through board members or point of entry events, right? So having the strategy of where are you going to get your new donors and doubling down on that, right? Um, the other piece that I always say for strategies is also review your wealth screening, right? Um, that sometimes people will do it because there is a cost to it, uh, but review the wealth screening piece, right? Uh, and there are also some third party, I know that a lot of CRMs have wealth screening built in, but there are some third party wealth screenings that are really effective. So maybe taking a different view, right? Um, and run, I would say this is an investment, not an expense, run everybody through the wealth screening. Don't assume that somebody's giving you $10, doesn't have the ability to give you more, right? So this is how you rebuild and re-examine your giving portfolios. Right, and who should be talking to those people, right? Uh, the other strategy I always say in the summer is, even though summers sometimes can be slow, ask for meetings now, is if, if if because they could say, oh, I'm away, but how about if we meet in August or September? But if you wait until August or September, you're not going to get onto their calendar calendar until almost it's too late, and say, oh my God, but I need to speak to you sooner. Because I need to know if I can get your commitment for next year. I need to know if you have extra money this year. Uh, I want to give you some updates. You know, maybe you have an updated case for support. Maybe there's some exciting news you want to share, right? Mm -hmm. So get on the calendar now, right? I love that. I think that's like, for me, that's one of those like, yeah, yeah moments. Good, good job. Yeah, that's smart. The other piece I would say is uh, review your secret budget. And people kind of go, what is that? Well, you have the budget that you agree to, you and your staff, or your fundraiser, or your department head, but you also know it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. So you go, here's the number, here's the stretch, and here's if we knock it out of the park, right? So as you reforecast, also review your secret budget. And this is the, I call it a secret budget because this is the budget you don't tell people about, right? Mm -hmm. um, so review the secret budget, right? I would say that. I would also say this also gives you an opportunity to do some vendor research. Right. You know, like if you haven't talked to some vendors or maybe the prices are going up or maybe there's some new opportunities, maybe your needs have changed. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing this when you're super busy. Right. Uh, you have a little bit of downtime do a little bit of vendor research. Right. Um, and then I also think that one of the strategies is to uh, research uh, outsourcing. Right. You don't have to do it all yourself, particularly if you're a small or medium shop. Right. You I mean. You join Canva, Canva's for free, and Canva gives the nonprofits their full professional suite that they charge for profit companies for. I would do that. There's um, LinkedIn for nonprofits. It has um, some learning stuff. Uh, there's, an, or there's a website called Upwork mm -hmm. uh, that you can do. There's one called Fever, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, mm -hmm. right? So maybe look at that, and that kind of is under the umbrella of just research and capacity building overall. Right. Maybe there are some funders in town that do capacity building and can help pay for the training for you. Right. Understanding what that looks like. Right. 
And I think the other opportunity for strategy is get out there and network. Sometimes we get so caught up in our small little bubble, yes. right? Meet other nonprofit professionals. Let them be your go-to. That is your tribe, right? Maybe join a chamber mixer, right? Maybe get involved with your AFP Association of Fundraising Chapter. Maybe this is the time you want to research becoming a CFRE, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So kind of take a look at that. Uh, I think the other strategy that I would mention, which is not the strategy I would have said last year, you need to do your research on AI, artificial intelligence. Yes, This is coming like a tidal wave, mm -hmm. right? So we do know that AI is already incorporated into Grammarly. Um, you can go to uh, u.com. Um, you can go to ChatGPT, which is probably the most famous one, uh, or the one that's um, best, best known. Um, it is coming. It is So research and how is how, how can you make that work for you? How does that work for your organization? How does that work for your donors, right? How does that work? And and I think all of these strategies is positioning you as the leader, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that and and so you can say, oh, I don't want it done to me. Well, be on the front end of that conversation. Reforecast, do these network opportunities, right? Yeah. Um, and that really are, is kind of the other thing that I will mention is the use of consultants. Uh, Julie, you and I had a conversation, I think, last month about this, right? Who are they? How do you find them? How do you work with them? Right. Uh, and if you don't have that expertise, right. the consultants would be great. Um, but I do think that our conversation has right now been on the revenue side. You, you should take a look at your expense budget. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you need to look at anything now? Right. Do you need to spend those dollars now? Mm -hmm. Right. And then the other thing that I would probably kind of mention um, that is take a look at your team. Right? Do you do you have the right training for them? Are they being supported? Are you being supported? Right. Are you getting the right training? Right? Mm -hmm. And if they say we're going to start individual giving, you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, let's get trained on it. Right? Let's right. bring in a consultant or bring in somebody else. So you know, I love these pieces, and I think they really are. Um, they're sharp. They make sense they can um, help you achieve your goals and they can head off problems so that you're not you know bummed out at the end of the year or feeling like you're going to lose your job or feeling like you want to leave your job but put this in the context of short term versus long term you I mean for some of us i mean for the calendar year we're halfway through you know help us to understand that ecosystem of time because AFP reports, and they have been for years, Jerry, and you and I have talked about this, that the average development director only stays on the job 18 months. And that's like a whole other discussion, and we've had it, we continue to have it. It's a real scourge within the nonprofit sector. But when we have this churn and burn, how can we be short-term versus long-term you know, sensitive, if you will? And if you could talk to us about this concept that would be amazing oh thank you julia the short term is basically what do you need now mm -hmm. it's immediate are you gonna hit the numbers are you not gonna hit the numbers are you hitting other variables right that's like the sh but mature organizations and and when you are sitting in that chair longer you need to put some strategy around the, what does it look like long term right what does that look like long term so we're going to talk a little bit about that. One of the things that I think you should take a look at in the long term is reviewing your overall case for support or supports because it changes, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and you can have more than one. And a case for support is just what is the issue or issues, what are the solutions, and then what are the investments? Mm -hmm. That is a case for support. The, obviously, there's more behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, but reviewing your case for support, right? Have the, have the numbers changed? Have the impact changed? change. I do know that one of the things that funders used to look at was um, outputs. And now they're starting to look at outcomes, right? right. Yeah. So one yeah. is like, how many meals are we like making? How many backpacks? Like that, that's an output. And an outcome is like, we're lifting people out of poverty. We're creating an environment with other collaborative 
uh, organizations doing coalition work. And here's the overall impact, right? That's the stuff that funders are like, oh my God, here we go. Yeah. How else? I'm going to lean into this conversation, right? So reviewing the case for support, taking a look at those. Uh, and then I think the other thing for the long term, which sounds simplistic, but is reviewing two key policies in fund development. Um, one is gift acceptance, what you accept and not accept. And the other is windfall when you get large unexpected gifts, right? Okay. So if you haven't reviewed some of the, well, if you don't have them, you should. But if you haven't looked at them for a while, this is a good way to have that leadership role. Let's take a look at some key policies and I can do some research. I can make some recommendations, right? And then I would also kind of recommend on the long term is you as a fund development person, you see a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of people. So you are part of that system to say, we should have a conversation with them. They're leaning in. They like what they're doing. They're getting more and more involved. Maybe they're a potential board member, right? And based on the board matrix, you need somebody who has technology or marketing or finance or law, right? So you have a unique lens that you can help with that, right? Uh, and then I think the other thing that I would recommend on the, the long term um, is two things. One, take a look at where your money has come in the last three to five years mm -hmm. to see if there are any trends, right? Yeah. Uh, and the second thing that I highly recommend that I don't see a lot of people doing is if your organization expenses increase year over year at 5%, then, then your fundraising goal should increase about eight. Right. So, so once you forecast, you can put those into dollars. Once you put those into dollars, then you can look for trends. Like we're going to have to do a legacy. We're going to have to do, you know, um, we're going to have to step up our game on monthly giving, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the kicker behind this though. When you do that, this puts you in a position to ask for more resources. We're going to need uh, full, another full-time person. We're going to take somebody from part-time to full-time. We're going to bring our contracted piece in-house, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and here is where our growth is going to come. And then you communicate that out. Like we're going to start, we're going to increase major giving. We're going to maybe you're bold enough to say, we're going to get rid of some special events that yeah. are, and, and we're going to replace it with, something else, right? So this is that long-term strategy. The other piece that I would kind of recommend for some people is job creep versus opportunity. Maybe you've had some staffing changes, maybe you've taken on more responsibilities, maybe somebody got promoted, you're taking on more and more, right? So there is a frustration with that. However, you could say, if I'm taking on more of the responsibilities, I would like XXX, right? Mm -hmm. So you turn this, um, from like, oh, uh, to an opportunity, but, right, right to, to, to see that, right? And I think the other long-term strategy that I hinted at is diversity in fundraising, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you're grant heavy or if you're special event heavy, right, is what is the long-term strategy to create um, diversity in our fundraising? And the okay. quickest way to do that is to take all the revenue lines, divided by the total and that will give you a quick percentage uh quick bush math as i say right this yeah. will and this but this also creates an opportunity for engagement at the, at the board level maybe the ceo maybe other department heads and just say as we grow right and the other piece here the long-term strategy is you want to look at your strategic plan the strategic plan is nothing more than a roadmap, right is there a capital campaign is there expansion of services is there a new building right so like, okay, what do we need to do now to ensure our long-term financial success? You know, Jerry, it's it's like a crime because we only have a, such a short amount of time left, but I don't want to leave um, today with all of your wisdom. And, and this has been so helpful and it's such a great synthesis of where we should be, where we are, how we move these pieces around. But all in the context of creating a culture of philanthropy. What does that mean to you? And what does that look like? Sure. Um, culture of philanthropy is an attitude, an understanding, a behavior. We're all in it together, yeah. right? But I will do a premise here that you can never achieve a culture of philanthropy without overall good culture, right? Okay. So, so the organization that. has to have good culture to begin with. Yeah. And then 
you start building cultural philanthropy. This is where you're all in it together. It's a behavior, it's volunteers, it's staff, it's board members, it's donors. Everybody is in to say, how do we move the organization forward, realizing that we are going to need resources, right? And those resources could come in time, treasure, talent, testimony, right? So overall, there is one other piece that is also very critical um, to culture of philanthropy, and that's uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity, mm -hmm. right? So I know those are buzzwords right now, but you have to have those in your culture, right? Yes. It's like it's like making bread. You have to have all the right pieces, yeah. right? All the right ingredients, and DEI is one of them, right? And the other thing about culture philanthropy is it is mission-based and not needs-based, right? So how do we help the overall mission yeah. through culture of philanthropy, <laughs> right? So that is really kind of, and I would probably say the other thing about cultural philanthropy, it's about us. It's about us. When you don't have good cultural philanthropy, what you'll hear is not my job, oh. silos, okay. lack of communication, right? Um, and so that is the other side of that. So if you're looking at kind of the yin and yang, that's what that is. You know, I love that because all too often, um, and you can probably speak to this in the literally the seconds we have left, but you know, so often this discussion is just for development. It, it needs to be across the organization, but we put all this pressure on the development team and then that's what I believe. That's why we have so much disruption and unhappiness is because it's too heavy of a load. And when we don't bring the entire organization into this um, concept and the culture of philanthropy, I think we just, um, we all lose out. I mean, it, it's, a, it's really an important issue and we don't talk about it enough. It seems like yeah. until there's a problem, right? <laughs> and then too late, <laughs> you know? Well, and then sometimes we learn lessons later, like, why did somebody leave? Yeah. You know, why did somebody come and, and leave quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at other people, and you're like, how do you have so many great, wonderful people? How do you keep them? How This is the conversation where you start speaking to other people. You're going to be like, ah, I need a plan. I need to understand short-term long term i need to understand the budgeting process i need to understand my 80 20 rule i need to understand the long budget i need all of these things right mm -hmm. and here's what i would say you don't have to have all the answers right you just have to know who and where to find them mm -hmm. yeah. and this is this is the uh my plug um for this show you talk about so many wonderful things right mm -hmm. you have an archive people can be like oh well, the use of a consultant let me go to that well, what about uh, financial issues? What about GAP? What about all of those? Mm -hmm. So there are lots of resources here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my friend, you are a resource to me and our community. Um, I just admire your work and I love your um, ethos and intelligence. It's super cool. Anytime I get a chance to spend uh, time with you, I'm like, I like glom onto you and try and get yeah. what I can because it's just so cool. And I really, really appreciate um, you. Again, uh, Geronimo, Geronimo, I like to say Geronimo, uh, Jerry Diaz, CFRE. Check out um, Geronimo Consulting. I'll say it, Geronimo, not Geronimo. <laughs> people will be like, how do you spell that? But anyway, Geronimo Consulting. Um, really, I, I'm one of the great minds and leaders in our sector. I, it's such a... A wonderful thing to call you my friend and to say that I I get to say I know Jerry Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> I brag all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know him. So anyway, check out Jerry. Um, he gets when I can wrangle him onto the show every now and again. It's just a true pleasure. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jerry Ransom, birthday girl, will be with us um, on Friday. Again, we have amazing partners that allow us to have these conversations, and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out, and we are full of gratitude for their support. Hey, Jerry, you know my sign-off, and I really... I really mean it. I loved how you started our conversation 
which took me a little by surprise, but I loved it. And that was self-care. Let's look internally so we can be our strongest and our best so we can do our best. And I believe this mantra of ours is even more prescient today. And it goes like this. Stay well so you can do well. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a great day, everybody.